Hey everybody, welcome back to Brett's Hang. I'm here with Michael Miller, ladies and gentlemen. The one and only Michael Miller. He's uh, Glenn Sobel's drum tech, and we are building a new touring rig for Glenn this year. That's and um, Michael is the mastermind behind all of Glenn's uh, designs on his rack, so uh, he's got a great design for us today. So tell me, what do you have in store for us? I hope so. <laughs> What we're doing today is building a circular drum rack around Glenn's new kit. This is a metallic red, it's called One Guy. It's a custom finish that DW just built for us for the Alice Cooper tour this year. And as you can see, we're building this circular rack that when it's done, it's gonna sit about up here somewhere. We've got a lot of work to do on this thing. We're just now laying it out, kind of scheming on how we're gonna make this happen. But Brent's the expert on building these things, so. We both come up with ideas and try and make it work, and a little bit of trial and error involved. We put stuff together and see how it works, and fortunately we have all the pieces we could possibly need to make just about anything we could think of. We've been successful so far, so. So hopefully we can get it right the first time. Yep. All right, so uh, let's get started. So the plan right here for the whole rack tom section is to have the rack toms mounted off their own verticals coming up on the inside. And then the outside, we're going to have verticals come up for the outside rings to attach to. One of, the, one of the biggest things for Michael is being able to split the rack in half very quickly because he has to get off stage and uh, deconstruct everything as fast as he can. So what we're doing is we're building this so you can disconnect it right here and just pull the two risers apart because it's going to be an 8x8 eight eight riser, um, you know, two 4x8 halves and they're just gonna split it right in half and the rack will split right in half with it. So, looking at a T-leg right here, it's gonna go in like this, the rack tom's gonna mount to here, and uh, one on that side as well. I mean, ooh, we could do it the same height as the curve comes around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it's adjustable up and down. We're just adding. Uh, we're just adding this quick support right here until we can get the rest of the, the the supports, the side supports added because we need to be able to keep this up. This will come off as soon as we we get everything else on. So what we've done is we've kind of established um, the positioning of where the toms are supposed to go. So now we're just going to start creating the other sides of the rack. What if we just ran Will the whole thing just come this way a tad bit? No, we're right up against the spur. Oh, you're on the spur. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just put that up there. For Does he really play it that far away? It's within reach of when he's sitting. Because he likes to, he plays with his arms ex like when he hits fully extended, right? Yeah, and his back is straight all the time, so he doesn't, he doesn't, there's no curvature in his back to reach in, so everything is pretty much right here within reach. You know? Yeah, because that, that bell is within reach of his, uh, his status. Yeah, something like that. It's about right to the middle. We've got a continuous half circle all the way through. We've had to use two of those ultra adjust ball clamps. The best ever. You put two pieces of pipe together, you can angle them any, any direction you like. Angles. This is what's making this rack work right now. 36 inch curve bar, 36 inch curve bar, and then a 24 inch curve bar. For his crash cymbal 
secondary crash, then we've got a ride symbol. We need to stabilize these pieces because <clears throat> we need an additional support for this because as you see, it's a little wobbly. So what we're going to do is attach a curve bar from here to here so it stabilizes that. Make room for the X hat. Is it going to make more sense to put it on the back side like this? Could be. As far as placement for that last crash. Because if you put it mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, too close. it's going to be way close. Mm -hmm. yep. there. Oh, so do we need more? Yeah. See how much pipe will go here. And That looks good. Is it? I, I see what it is. It's got to come out a little bit. Is it? Did you I get it? it? Mm -hmm. Keep going. More perfect. L key. Like a DW key? We're gonna have to pull the whole thing out. Yeah, that Base is on the inside, and if I ever need it, it's still there. That way we still have the extra space. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's uh hold on, let's let's get the distance. Let's just lock the distance in real quick. We have finished the entire floor tom side of the kit. So here's the right half of the kit, which is the floor tom side. We've got our 13 inch tom right here that's going to be coming straight up from the back vertical. And we have it mounted to the same foot T-leg assembly as the front support. And then we had to create an additional support to keep this from moving left and right. So that's what this is for. Now, we've got three rings here, and they're tapered. The bottom ring goes all the way around from the front half to the back half. The second ring is tapered a little bit, a little bit less, so it's halfway of this bar. Tapers all, goes all the way around to the back, and the third ring, which is the top ring, is half of the second tier and goes all the way around to the back. Now, we have the two verticals right here for his, cr his crash, his china, and then we have another crash, and we're putting the ride symbol right in here off this inner tier. We had to add this inner tier just to stabilize these two verticals, and we were able to use these cool uh, ultra adjust tube end clamps that connect two tube ends together with, an, with, a, with a ball that allows you to pretty much mount at whatever angle you want. So we were able to make a continuous line, which was a circle, using these clamps. <laughs>